included on the agenda. Do we have any emails or any uh, phone messages?
They use, were used by other districts repeatedly, which shows satisfaction uh, with their work and what they've done. The distance is very, very important to me so that they potentially can meet with board members personally rather than through Zoom, uh, and even potentially candidates as well. Um, I was impressed with the personal touch of the brochures and the oral uh, answers that they gave uh, when we interviewed them by Zoom. Uh, they were uh, frank and honest, and even my uh, one comment that they shocked them, uh, probably through long, but they didn't miss a beat. And um, the long-term service, they've been in this business for a long time. That is important as well. So they do definitely know their business and people. I, I want to continue on with this process. I think that it's very important uh, that we have a fair, fair process in choosing our next general manager, whether it be local, it be uh, from 10 by 2, uh, whoever it is, and we want to have the very best general manager that we can. And so uh, I think that this is a one more step forward in that process. Any other questions or comments by board members? I will entertain a motion and a second. I'll make the motion. It's been moved by Vice President Huff and seconded by uh, Director Byron. Uh, roll call, please. Director Byron? Yes. President Huff? Yes. Director Huff? Yes. Let's go to 4B. 4B is a professional services agreement, HR consulting services. Staff is recommending the board to offer as a general manager to enter into an agreement with M.B. Chang and Associates Inc. for an annual amount of $88,400 for human resources, professional consulting services. And presenting this is our CFO, uh, Jonathan Abadesco. Uh, well, thank you, President May. Um, dear board members, um, district staff, public members, good evening. Way back in March, the board agreed and approved the district to hire an HR consultant. Staff has since uh, interviewed three firms, namely Robert Half, RGS, or Regional Government Services, and MV Chen and Associates. The uh, representative from MV Chen and Associates has an extensive background as an HR director or as a consultant with various governmental agencies. Um, we also check their background, at, yeah, um, including um, their candidates, and we receive um, favorable um, references. The annual amount of the agreement is $88,000 at the rate of $85 an hour with an average of 20 hours per week. All out-of-pocket costs will be shouldered by the consultant. Also included in the agreement is the district may cancel the agreement at any time. I'll be happy to answer any questions following public comments. Are there any emails for any individuals that are on the phone that would like to make comments? No emails, and all of still have the capability of calling. We have not received any emails, and there's no one that's speaking, so I will bring it back to the board. Is there any comments about this? Director Singer. Hello. Question or two. Um, just to get me up to speed, it says that any amount uh, is that a not to exceed or is that a fixed annual fee? It's a uh, not to exceed. Not to exceed. And it says annual, so I mean, would this automatically renew at the same price year after year if all parties are in agreement? Yes. Or is there an escalator? Actually, we were not told of any um, escalation on the price. Mm -hmm. okay. So when we get to that point, um, we will try to negotiate. And, and Director Stadium, 
amount of likelihood, if we weren't after a year, there probably will be an increase based, just based upon the cost of living and the inflation factor. So, this but is that's fine. Right. So, yeah. the other hand, I'd say is when we talked to the other firms, the consultants that they had, I believe they were like at $120 an hour. So, we're actually saving $35 an hour. And this individual interviewed just as well or better than. And uh, it's it's so nice to have somebody that has an extensive background with uh, working with municipal agencies, which we like the most. Yes. That's fine. So you interview the person that's going to be here. Yes. And is she going to be dedicated, or that person is going to be dedicated to high desert?
moved by Vice President Huff and seconded by Director Byron. Uh, roll call, please. Director Sato? Yes. Vice President Huff? Yes. Director Byron? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Let's go on to number five, Director's Reports. For information purposes only on subjects not covered by the agenda, and no action to be taken. Thank you, Mr. President. I was uh, to attend the town council meeting last night. It was canceled. I am uh, planning to attend the uh, remote access uh, Mojave Water Agency TAC meeting tomorrow. I will report on that next time. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Director Meyer? Yes, I attended the uh, Mojave Water Agency board meeting on uh, August 27th, and they provided an extensive presentation on water banking and transfers. And they're going to repeat that presentation tomorrow at the TAC meeting at 10 a.m. So um, it really was a good presentation, very thorough. So if you need to learn about water banking and transfers, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. They also approved the professional services agreement with the Mojave Desert uh, Resources Conservation District in the amount of $52,000 to Help them with studies or complete studies on phase of species removal, swamp river study, irrigation water management, and water conservation. Also attended the annual meeting of the California Rural Water Association on 828 via Zoom. And the only item in business there was election of officers and they elected the two some of the directors. That's all I have to report. And I was the only delegate on that on the call. I thought that, that was And let's go on to number six, manager's report. Chief Financial Officer Jonathan Evanesco. Um, I have nothing to report here. And we have our executive secretary, Woody Nix. And Assistant General Manager Operations, Tony Culver. Just one thing uh, to add to our solar talk, uh, the second solar we talked with on that the financial or the engineering committee meeting is working with me on RFQ to get that out to different places so we can keep moving forward with that. And General Manager Ed Music. Yes, good evening. Director Byron, the Mojave transfers and banking, was that with other state water contractors or with their customers? Who was who gave the presentation? No, no, no. Who who is Mojave going to bank for? Like would we be part of that banking or is this just with other state water contractors? According to what I learned on me, They've been looking at banking for quite some time, and so they've put together a team that's actually going to analyze the opportunities available to the um, Mojave Agency oh, okay. and can come back with recommendations. I would think as a stakeholder, we would be able to participate. Um, I would hope, if given the opportunity, that we should have a representative there in the, in the meetings when they Determine the rules and such for water banking. Because some of the fees that they're talking about charging are growing. Because years ago, when Director Stegen being on the Morongo Basin Pipeline Commission, we brought up that idea of like when water was plentiful and we couldn't take it, could we bank it over there at Mojave? But they never, they always kind of pushed it down the road, so it's good that they're looking at it now. Um, at a previous meeting, we raised limits. The one thing we didn't raise was the amount, of what the amount is when we have to go out to bid. Now, we just completed a water project here in Kenyon, going to be poured underneath the road. We could put in a bigger water line. We had two bids for paving, which we want to get done. Madison being a low bid is 33600 If we go through the process of steel bid, and it's going to take at least another 30 days, and we want to get that paid as soon as possible. So I'm just notifying the board that I'm going to approve this. It seems almost like an emergency uh, PO. It's about $8,600 over my threshold, but I think it's well worth it. Again. We had a call this week uh, about the Joshua trees. Uh, very interesting. Um, Fish and Game talked about a 2084 permit, which would allow construction during this feasibility study. However, for our project, all of our infrastructure for phase one is basically done. We don't have any more construction, so we really don't need a 2084. The other thing is the question about the vacant lots and 
phase one and the bank loss in phase two and three in the future. <coughs> it looks like we had some type of addendum in our state court originally for phase one bank loss about connecting to the federal plan. So we're going to try to find out if in fact our state court covers all the bank parcels in phase one first, and then we'll look at phase two and three to see if that can help mitigate this. Another issue is that if we don't currently have a state court, we could have someone who want to sponsor, and the town being the land use authority, a state court for the whole town to cover all the vacant parcels. Uh, that may work with them. And they also suggested that if somehow we had a parcel of land that had Joshua Tree, and we could earmark it that it would never be developed, potentially take on additional kind of mitigate these issues, that that would be uh, something worthwhile. I think the county is looking at something like that. So uh, we gave our best presentation. I believe we have a good consultant from Stephanie from Red. So she's going to go through all of our secret documents, documents for phase one, and let us know where we stand and then uh, talk to the Department of uh, Wildlife. And then um, in our legislative call, they said that there were no legislative bonds that passed this year. So and they have to go to a general election. So the earliest another bond will come out will be in 2022. And the, they said the legislators will come back in December, I believe, to swear in the new newly elected and then we can January, unless they need a special meeting due to the coronavirus and some financial obligations. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number seven is upcoming agenda items. Are there any agenda items that are requested by board members? None? All right. Anything else? Bring it down to agenda at 524. Thank you for coming. Thank you for calling in and emails and for